and ain't nothing worse than you know what I mean you got all that built up testosterone and you laying next to a woman every day and she tell you no. You know what I mean? And I'm like, shit. Then, then what I'm supposed to do? That's when you like, fuck it. I'm gonna go watch this porn. That's mm -hmm. the and that's the best case scenario. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of a scary to remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. Today we're gonna talk about porn. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. We're gonna talk. This is unfiltered, so. Just to give a quick disclaimer, if you have kids, and I know, you know, sometimes you got the little kids listening, no kids today, okay? This is a, a real <laughs> explicit content today. We're going to keep it real. We're going to help somebody today. I have a special guest with me. He is a father. He is a DJ. He is one third of the most dangerous podcast out here <laughs> in the drunken nights, <laughs> Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Byron, a.k.a. Brother to the Night. How are you doing today, man? I'm well, good, brother. How are you, man? Man, I'm good. Thanks for taking some time out to jump on with me with this serious topic, because I know I listen to the show. And you it's funny how, it's funny how you, say, uh, you said you would put a disclaimer out. You said telling people, look at it. Uh, if you got kids, don't listen. But you started off. Look, we talking about porn today. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? We, yeah. We, yeah, man. We we just kicking it. Ah, uh, I was looking at some statistics, and of course, you know, porn today is it's so mainstream today. Like it's almost normal. Yeah. Um, by today's standards, we kind of a little similar in age group somewhere. I'm a little bit older than you, but we kind of still in the same age range. Mm -hmm. um, so you you are familiar with some of the stuff that we grew up with back in the day, because I remember the first time I, 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 was, I had to see porn. I had to actually go look for it. Yeah. You know, nowadays. I stumbled across it. OK, well, and tell me tell me that experience, man. Let's talk about that. So when did you first encounter porn and, and what was that like for you? Uh, I first came across porn. I want to say probably like a third grade mm. that I can remember. Yeah, uh, I was I was over one of my homies' crib, and he uh, his dad had the uh, Playboy with uh, Latoya Jackson. <laughs> I remember and, that one. <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, oh shit, okay, titties. But I have been so like. I was introduced to sex earlier than that. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was my, uh, I had already, I was already attracted to breast, women and breasts. You know what I mean? But like watching, I was like, oh, they got magazines like this. Okay. And then he was like, hey, I got more. Then he popped in the tape, the VHS cassette. It was like, oh, shit. And it was just women playing with themselves and shit or whatever, with old dildos and shit. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is lit. Yeah. But at the time, I didn't know what to do with it or whatever. It's just like, shit, we just watching people have sex. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I hear you, man, because I, shoot, I think I was around maybe, maybe like nine or 10, maybe. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And, and actually, I was, this wasn't even porn. It was just a, a, a girl that was next door to us. You know what I'm saying? And she, uh -huh. and something might've happened to her because she was on me. Like, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? Kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, we were talking about shit like that. <laughs> it, it, no. Yeah. And, and that's real I'm, too. Yeah. Boy. Like I was like five or six. Mm. Uh, it was like the the babysitter, uh, my babysitter. She uh, it was like me and my cousin. Like she let us suck on her candy. She was like thirteen, mm. twelve or thirteen, something like that. Mm -hmm. She let us suck. Her. She let I was on one titty and my cousin was on the other. Mm. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I know. It was wild. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it as a grown ass man, you know what I mean? You started working through traumas and shit like that. But yeah, I was like five or six when I got introduced to shit like that. Mm. Yeah. And then and then you figure, 
you get, you know, you get a little older or even when you're younger, you think like, how do you even process that? You know what I'm saying? Like after yeah. that happens, you just go on with your day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. No, no, that wasn't it. That wasn't I it. Want titties. Mm. I want to see some more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you didn't. You know what I mean? It was like you played with the idea. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, like you used to play nasty tag and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, crazy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it, it was. I was doing, we was all doing shit that we shouldn't have been doing back then. You know what I mean? Seven minutes in hell, seven minutes in heaven. You know what I mean? Autumn games. I don't even know if kids play games like that no more. No. But no. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, right. Yeah, man. Um, and which is, the thing about it is, our stories, this this isn't just us. This, I'm sure this happened to so many other guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we just didn't know how to process it and how to talk to it or who do we even talk to? Or was it just considered cool because we were guys? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, uh, now now people will say that, yeah, you, you were molested. Yeah, that's what it was. I was molested at an early age, but I, I didn't know no better. You know what I mean? I thought it was cool at the time. I mean, I, I've been seeing, like, you know, social media, how so many people say this so much. So many of us as men, like our first sexual encounter was really rooted in trauma. We were all, we were children and we got taken advantage of, but I mean, hell, yeah, it it, it does kind of skew your view towards sex, you know what I mean? And then you introduce porn, which gives you uh, a completely different jaded uh, idea of the way sex is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because like I watch so much porn, man. I could really re- watch some shit and be like, man, she really don't enjoy that. She acting like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's no because the thing about that too is, I remember I was like maybe like around eleven, and mm-hmm. I had I seen a uh, my homeboy. He had a little VHS tape. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And he let me see that thing. And from there, it was just like wet cement. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> once I once I got that image in me, it was it was over. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, check this out, man. I was doing some 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 uh, statistic check real quick as mm-hmm. on this website called uh, Covenant Eyes. They, t- they said 28,258 users are watching pornography every second. Mm. 28,258 users are watching pornography every second. That's wild. That that's believable. I mean, it's so accessible now. Yeah. Like uh it's I mean, whatever you want to whatever you feel like looking at, whatever that you are curious about, you have at your fingertips. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it makes a hell of a lot of a sense. I mean, I've uh, I find myself sometimes just out of boredom, just pull up and look it up on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They say the I don't, uh, I don't mind is the devil's playground. Yep. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to find, I try to find things now to really occupy my time with rather than just doing that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, I go start listening to music, get on my D, start DJing and shit like that, but. Um, yeah yeah you gotta have something that's, that's gonna keep you busy you gotta have some kind of alternative man because mm-hmm. if you don't have no alternative and the, and the scary thing about it is too like you said it's always on your phone because yeah. i can be on social media i could be scrolling on somebody on 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 a, a, somebody's page or whatever and or twitter man twitter yeah twitter is crazy yeah you know what i'm saying and then you end up down the whole wormhole yep yep so I'm just and like Twitter show you exactly what you like too. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to follow that person anymore. I'm going to stop following them because this is all they share. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. once you once you see it, once you watch it, and then they just like you say, it's a whole rabbit trail. 
Well, the thing about it is you don't even have to the the person that if somebody doesn't even have to share it. They can just like it. Mm. And just because they like it, it's going to show up in your feed. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, damn. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, because I was thinking sometimes as men, I wonder do men really can men really beat this thing? Because at the end of the day, we all like women, right? Yeah. Well, not all of us. But, well, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do your thing. <laughs> whatever you like. Whatever folks, whatever tickles your pickle. <laughs> yeah, right. You 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 like what you like, right? Yeah. And like you said, it's it's just served up on a on a on a plate for you. It is, but at the same time, like it ain't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it ain't as easy to get sex as, you know, porn make, will make you to believe. You know what I mean? Even though it is, too. I mean, that's not true. It is. It depends on how much money you got. Shit, if you you willing to spend a couple of dollars, you're pretty sure you can get some. <laughs> they spend a couple of dollars, huh? Yeah, you spend a couple of dollars. It's, I'm pretty sure it's somebody willing to have sex with you. That's true, too. That's very true. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if you got, you know, that dollar sign, you know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of guys chase the dollar, right? Yeah. But is it fulfilling? You know what I mean? That's the real thing. Like, I don't know. I, I, some, of, some, some of us, we view what, I, and I'll say even like, like when you get introduced to sex in the manner that maybe we did, you start viewing women as conquest as, instead of actual people. Mm-hmm. You know, and it takes all the, it takes the real combo, like, it takes the real meaning between sex, you know what I mean, the joining of two souls, it takes that away from it, and it's just, look, it's just, you just giving it to you, like, your primal nature, you know what I mean, look, I seen this woman, I got horny, my dick got hard, and I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, and it, and just like that, and even in today's culture where uh, the, the the ladies they be on savage mode too. They be like, "Praise God!" <laughs> yeah, I, I I I'm for that too. Yeah, you know what but I'm saying. I think I think I don't know. I I think that comes with uh, I think the older that they become, the well, no, nah, that's a lie. Cause <laughs> I was about to say that don't happen. The older you, that women get, but nah, that's a lie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's the wild wild west out here. You know, it's all bets off the table. You know yeah, saying? I I, I had a uh, I had a, a cool couple summers, man. But I'm kind of over all of that shit now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, it's fun, but it has its highs. Being single has its highs, and then it has its lows, man. And the lows be if you're not really work doing the real work on yourself, man. The lows can really fuck you up. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Do you think porn affects men in the bedroom? Like, do we just really supposed to think like women supposed to por- act like porn stars? Uh, when you're young, yeah. Mm. Like when you're young and inexperienced, yeah. I even I have I've had some women that have acting like porn stars in the bed and it made me question like look are you doing this just because you think that's what you're supposed to be doing or you really this is really how you get down you're like because i know i'm doing something but you ain't supposed to be making that much noise i ain't mm. i ain't put it on you like that mm. so like so- this is this is this is really b dick <laughs> I'm not giving you grade A dick now. Come on now. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you, man, because a lot of times I think with guys, man, we see porn and, and you know, like you say, when, especially when you're younger, you know, mm-hmm. you you trying all the all the moves on different women because mm-hmm. you just think this is how sex is supposed to be. But when you get into that real relationship, you realize how much work it actually takes 
to get the results you're looking for. It takes all day. <laughs> you got to get in their head first. You know what I mean? Want to even warm her up with the process. Mm -hmm. And then build up the anticipation. And then once you actually get to the bedroom, then you got to deliver. And then there's the foreplay. You like foreplay start in the, like in the in the very beginning of the day. You know what I mean, it ain't really just a physical thing with women most times. You got to get in their hand first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but porn and lip porn to make you believe that you just get in the room, touch her a couple times, and then you're she ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all you got to have a you just all you got to do is have a hard dick and spit it, just put it in. You just rub some spit on your dick and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it damaged so many of of our young men, and I think even too from a because scientifically they say like it rewires your brain, it rewires your 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 mind. You know what I'm saying? In the way you see things, because you start looking at women as objects opposed to actual people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when things become primal because you're just looking at them solely as sex objects opposed to actual people. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. Uh that and then I I think a, a lot of social media plays into that too, man. Just like you can see, like, the mind frame of people. Like, I saw something the other day talking about, uh, it was a dude saying something along the lines of, like, imagine seeing the chick you used to bust down getting wiped up. Mm. And you like, really? You chose to wife her? I'm like, yeah, maybe I saw something in there more than just the fuck. You know what I mean? Maybe I actually saw her as a whole person as opposed to just a piece of pussy. Mm. Yeah, I chose the wife her up. Mm. Maybe you should have if you actually took the time to get to know her instead of just trying to fuck her. Mm. Yeah. Well, what advice would you give to 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 the younger brothers who, you know, especially because they got porn in their hand, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give? Because I know you have a son. Mm -hmm. um, ha have you had that that talk with him or early? Mm. <laughs> early yeah yeah um man i really don't have much to say just <laughs> like because just just don't think that that's like real life a lot of those those scenarios don't be real life now every once in a while you might come into a situation that's similar to that. I, I have had a situation that was similar like but that's it's few and far in between, man. Like, most of the time, you're going to have to get to know somebody before you end up having sex with them. It don't, sex just don't happen like that. Mm. Important. And, like, know when you're watching that shit, you're watching actors and actresses. Like, they're not, they're not really enjoying some of that shit. A motherfucker taking, look, it might be some of them that's enjoying taking five and six dicks at one point in time, mm -hmm. but there's, there's a lot of drugs and like all kinds of other shit that's happening behind the scenes before the cameras even come on. Mm -hmm. And not, not to mention the, like some of the trauma that's probably taken care of by some, or this taking place for some of the actors, actresses to get on there. You know what I mean? Like, Oh no. Yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't really have much to say about because, I mean, as if you, as a kid, man, you got all that testosterone, you got all that testosterone, man, you're going to have to get it out some type of way. But just don't use it as a crutch. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember they had that one uh, Damon Wayans joke talking about his son would go beat his shit or whatever. Mm -hmm. First time, like, spaghetti again? <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> in the bathroom for like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so like shit. Don't don't use that shit as a crutch, man. You know what I mean? Like and try to find something more productive to do with your time than just sit there beating your dick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because it can be a time suck, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you end up 
scrolling through some shit, and then next thing you know, you're on page 65. (laughs) 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 You just been scrolling through all the weird, like, man, Mm -hmm. shit happens, man. Yeah, Yeah, right. Not to mention, like, you end up seeing shit that you weren't supposed to see. And that's what I was about to say. Yeah, that'd be the worst. Like, I saw... Man, Twitter is the devil. <laughs> like I was looking at some chick, had a fat ass. She got the shake. She had like a dress that was like slow, cut, like covering her ass. Mm. And she got the shake in her ass and the the skirt raised, and I saw nuts in a flap. Oh, God. I said, nah, this now, now why would you do this? Right. Now, who put this on my goddamn feed?" <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, cause yeah, you know what? Yeah, cause I ain't gonna even yeah, cause I heard a friend of mine. He said his son was struggling with porn, and uh-huh. he he told his he told his son, "Why would you want to watch another man have sex with a woman?" See, I saw that. I I read something about that a long time ago in this book called Maximize Manhood. Mm-hmm. Where it said that it, it's like really cowardice for men like to do that shit because you're actually watching somebody else get pleasure while you have you sitting there by yourself having the pleasure yourself. Like, mm-hmm. damn, I feel like a bitch. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, for real, you know. And, and and when he when he told me that, I was like, man, I and I never really thought of it like that. I was just like, wow, like. That's real, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. So I, I think some of it comes with just having a different mindset. But if, like you said, if you just get hooked on watching it for so long, you just like you throw all that stuff out the window. You just got a feeling, and you just got to get it off. I don't even get aroused by looking at porn no more. Mm. Most times, like especially in this traditional sense, you know what I mean. With men and a man and a girl, like no, I'd rather just watch women by themselves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is still nonetheless porn, but like I don't need no dick in my porn no more. <laughs> yeah, Just right. Give me the woman right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 real because a lot of guys, you know, they like you say, you be on a whole different page than yep. seeing something you don't need to be seeing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I <laughs> You know, I, I I think ultimately, man, with today in today's culture, like I think, like I said, when we were growing up, we had to actually go search for it. Yeah. But now, man, you had to rewind to the certain part of the tape just in case whoever had the tape was gonna come back up and see it. Like, <laughs> yep, somebody somebody been watching my videos, right? Yeah, yeah, but now, nah. I I will say that some a lot of that sometimes too might be because of your dad. It's like sins of the father passing down. You know what I mean? Like for us, it that's exactly what it was because you had to get it from somebody older than you. You know what I mean? Like first time I saw it in, in my house was like my mom's boyfriend at the time. He just had it sitting around. You know what I mean? It was called Angel and Friends. <laughs> I remember it clear as day. Yeah. And I popped that motherfucker in, and this motherfucker was going to work on this chick on the jukebox. It's like, oh, damn, that's what's going on. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just, I would, I became, like, engrossed in that shit. I used to watch it, just eating dinner sometimes. Mom wouldn't be home. I'd just be eating, watching porn, just for no reason. Mm-hmm. And you young, you know what I'm saying? You just got the, yeah. all that testosterone flowing through your body. You just, you know, I, I heard a guy say, I heard someone say that women aren't shamed for, uh, no, what did he say? Men are shamed for having testosterone, but women aren't shamed. Oh, man, I'm going to mess it up. But anyway, basically, it's saying that men are ashamed for having testosterone. Like, very few, 
like women don't understand what we go through as men having testosterone. Mm-hmm. Now, I did hear a, a relationship. Estrogen. Yep. Yeah, that's what he was talking. Yeah, he said women, you know, they aren't, they aren't ashamed for that, you know, or, you know, with their feelings and stuff like that, their hormones. Mm-hmm. But we're ashamed for having testosterone. But I heard a relationship coach say one time, I think it was Re- Rebecca Lynn Pope. You know who she is? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. But she was, ta- I, she said something about she had to take some testosterone shots or something. Mm-hmm. And she, she said she just couldn't keep her hands off her man. And she was like, I just dealt with that for a couple of days. She was like, men mm-hmm. actually live with that stuff. She was like, I don't know how y'all do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So I was just like, oh, okay. So she had to go through that in order to understand what we go through as men. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, and ain't nothing worse than, you know what I mean? You got all that built up testosterone and you laying next to a woman every day and she tell you no. You know what I mean? And I'm like, shit. Then, then what I'm supposed to do? That's when you like, fuck it, I'm going to go watch this porn. That's the mm-hmm. and that's the best case scenario. All too <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, because the other situation is shit, I'm gonna just go find me somebody else to fuck. Mm-hmm. And then you create a whole nother problem. You know what I mean? Man, that's real. So do you think how do you feel about men with self control? Do you think that is that something that you could try to work mm. on as young as you can, because I think self-control is something that a lot of guys don't get or they don't understand until the consequences. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a, a good question right there. Uh, I will say like it's self-discipline, you know what I mean? If the, if you can tell yourself, no, like to porn or whatever, it'll create the discipline that you need for other areas of your life. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> what, uh, like I used to, uh, you know, I grew up in church and shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a wild statement to say it like that, but <laughs> I did. And, uh, you know, I used to always get confused when people say, deny your flesh. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But, Ultimately, that is what it means to me. You know, what I mean that—that's a piece of what it means to do that. To like, you got to be willing to tell yourself no, mm-hmm. and find something else to do with your, something constructive to do with your time, than mm-hmm. just scrolling through them sites. Man. And it seems like it's a new one every day. Yeah. And they and they making bread like these production companies. They like you say something popping up every, new every day. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you even got some people who they, there was a there's a documentary on Netflix, and uh, it was actually Netflix. It wasn't like a it wasn't a porn site. It was actually Netflix because <laughs> yeah. I hear myself saying it, and I'm like, we're talking about porn. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it was it was something about young girls when they get into the industry and they're like 18, 17 and they they have maybe a, a, a two year run maybe mm-hmm. and and then they just churning them out they just get these young girls, they get them they 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 out of the, the industry by 24 yeah you know what I'm saying, but and, they damaged they, yeah, they got that stain on their jacket the whole time, you know what I mean, like and then it's men, like men come at them, and that's the first thing that they coming at them with. And like I like I follow a couple women that used to do porn. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, you know, they used to be favorites of mine back in the day and shit. And it'd be wild to see like the comments, you know what I mean? Uh I mean, like this woman has moved on with her life, she's gone and she's doing something else completely different. Whether she's been married, she's been, like, she's just, she's not a part of that world no more. And then that's all her comments be is, nigga, when you gonna come back? Or they just talking shit about her, like, uh, nah, this woman is a dog, this woman, uh, she's she's a hoe, she's been, like, look, this is, she has a whole mother now. You know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah, she did some shit in her twenties or whatever to, to make some bread. But shit, nigga, what if? What about all the fucked up shit you did in your twenties? You know, <laughs> yeah, <man>? right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. She did porn, but bro, like, this is she's. That's when she was a young woman. Now she's a woman, man. You know what I mean? Like, let her forget that. You know, not not necessarily forget, but right. people move on, man. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I know I'm not the same nigga that I was in my twenties. Mm-hmm. And to to hold somebody from for that same shit that they did back then, that shit kind of wild. Yeah, yeah. And then you know they they got the they got the video to prove it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. they and they and they want to keep reliving that past because that's when you was 22. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You ain't you ain't the man no more. Uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't yeah. you ain't who you used to be. So you trying to relive them glory days. <laughs> Wow, man. Yeah. You know, it's like I, watch, go ahead. It's like watching, uh, it's like a nigga that's 40 to always talk about shit with the, the numbers he used to put up in basketball in high school or on the football field and all that. Like, nah, nigga, that's who you used to be, nigga. You're not that nigga no more. <laughs> what you doing today, bro? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's too many of them out here like that. They still got the high school jacket and everything. Mm-hmm. They trying to relay that pass. Yeah, Al Bundy, I scored four touchdowns for Polk High. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Man, do you have any piece of parting advice? I know we were all over the place today. There's so many places out, I, I, you know, yeah. we could have just went. Uh, but what kind of advice do you have? For for some young man that might be listening to this, or he might just really be struggling in this area, like what kind of a, advice would Brother to the Night give to this to this young man? Uh, well, I didn't at first, man. But when you did, when you brought up the self control and the self discipline, uh, I think that's that's one of the things that. Uh, I, I I try to pass on to somebody younger than me, man. Like if even if 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 that's where it's starting, it's just porn. You know what I mean? Like being able to put it away for a little bit. You know what I mean? And do some find something else to occupy your time. Like practicing self discipline, and uh, that could go so many different ways in your life, and it'll be so much better for you, man. So. If if that's the one of the first things that could cut your life out, cut out, or you could cut out of your life to be more productive and doing something uh, that could really add value to your life, uh, I would probably start there. But so yeah, find if if that is the first thing you could do to get or uh, to instill some type of self discipline in your life, man, mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Because had I learned that early in the game, you know what I'm saying? Because it's one of those things that I know for me, like if I'm end up watching porn, I'm going to feel bad after. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Ugh. I'm just feel like, damn, like, eh. like, do I really have to do that? Like, eh. you know what I'm saying? So I know, and some people might not have that conviction. Some people just be like, yeah, hey, I'm going about my day. You know what I'm saying? I don't know more. But that's I, I know I so you know from a, a religious standpoint mm. I know um, it was a pastor that was saying something like that like when you when you really in tune with the Bible or whatever uh, you uh, you'll start feeling some type of way when you do sin against yourself or whatever but when you you're in a danger zone. You're in a danger zone, a dangerous place when you no longer had that conviction after doing. Mm. Mm. I said that. But the, I think the difference between yourself and myself in that instance is just you married. You know what I mean? So maybe that's why you feel that conviction or whatever. I know uh, it's something I've been trying to break free from just because I know. Really, it's just a substitute for being lonely. Mm. You know what I mean, 
So it's like shit. And then you still feel empty afterwards. You know what I mean? It's like a, just an empty nut. So it's like, man, I, I did that because that's what I needed at the time. Mm. But I probably could have still did something else with that time. No matter how minuscule it was, mm-hmm. I could have been doing something more productive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, and, and that, uh, that goes across the table, cause whether single or married, cause my wife and I, we'd had a whole conversation about it. Cause she was like, well, shoot, you know what I'm saying? We need to just make sure that we tighten this thing up between you and I, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So now for us with sex, it's just like, you know, we just get it in, we get it in, you know what I'm saying? But even mm-hmm. still, if, if porn is dominating your life, then she still won't be enough. Yeah, that's that's a wild though to have somebody porn dominating your life. Sheesh. Man, listen, you would be surprised. There's married and single. I uh-huh. B, I talk to a bunch of men. Shoot, I talk uh-huh. to a bunch of women. And then even even in the sticky part is even if the couples watch part. it together. Yeah. That's the sticky part because she's like, you know what I'm saying? And uh-huh. and even even the numbers with women with uh women watching porn is even on the rise. Oh uh, no, nah, I I from what I know of, I just actually had a conversation with a woman about like she said she had just cut it off. Uh she was just cutting out porn or whatever because it was desensitizing her to sex, just like it does for me. You know what I mean? It does the same just for them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um but what I've come to find out is that uh, I know a lot of women that watch porn, they be watching lesbian porn, even though they have no, like, maybe they they a little bit curious, but they don't really have no desire to be with no woman, but she, they get off to watching lesbian porn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or they, shit, I know one that she liked watching gay men, and that shit was just wild to me, like, for you to not be attracted to two men in that in that way, you know what I mean? Why would you get off to that? Mm. But it's just perversions, man. Your perversions just happen. To, they gonna get worse and worse the more you start watching that shit. Yep. Yeah, they yeah. say old habits die hard. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? You don't check that boy at the door. You just never mm-hmm. know. They, they always say, you know, be careful. We open up Pandora's box. You never know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but man, this has been uh, a great show, man. This is probably just the beginning uh, of <laughs> plenty of conversation starters because I know brothers. And so people going to come in in the comments. Uh, we're going to answer those questions, but you know, somebody have a question, email, whatever <laughs> we could talk because I think this is something that's harmful to a lot of relationships and a lot of people just don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know? So, of course, I had to have Brother to the Night come on here because I knew he's going to keep it 100. <laughs> I try to, man. Yeah, for sure. So let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. Uh, you can get in touch with me at B-R-O-T-H-A, the number 2-K-N-I-G-H-T. Or you can check me out on my podcast at the Drunken Nights. That's Nights with the K. Uh, we release every <clears throat> an episode every Monday. Um, yeah, so there's that. Mm. And you want to talk about uh, the DJ and what's going on with that? Oh uh, yeah, I'm a DJ in the Indianapolis area, man. Uh, you can catch out uh, my latest few mixtapes on uh, or. SoundCloud, uh, that's Brother to the Night spelled the same way, man. I'm in the Indianapolis area, but I do travel. So. Mm. Okay. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Brother to the Night. Make sure you check out Drunken Nights podcast. I've been listening to these brothers for some years now. Uh, <laughs> even We even got to meet in person and got to connect a couple of times. So that's always yeah. Uh, that's always cool because y'all the same people on the show that when I actually see y'all, y'all the same people. So Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So Brave Arts community, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share uh, this video uh, with the, with the, you know, 
somebody who might be a little more mature, like I said, this isn't for kids, but maybe somebody might be struggling in this area and just having a real conversation about stuff like this and even married couples as well, because it's, it's it's the same across the board. You could be single and be married and still struggling with this or trying to get out of it. Who knows? There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So make sure you share. Make sure you leave a rating and review if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts. By doing so, I'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach with special guests. Brother, Brother to the night. <laughs> Brother to the night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, people. Take care.